Welcome to another episode of the Chill by Net podcast. This podcast is created for those who are passionate about their personal development, health, and well-being. This is a platform for you to come chill by my personal stories and weekly tips in becoming a better version of ourselves and to live a better present. But first, let's chill. My name is Jeanette. Welcome back. So today, I'm going to be introducing a new concept which had changed my life. Okay, maybe not changed my life, but rather it had changed my perspective about life. So what really inspired me to do this episode was this concept of wabi-sabi. So I'm not sure if you have heard of it, but it's an ancient Japanese philosophy, you know, evidently from the name itself. So when I first came across this, you know, concept a few months back, I had to admit that I read it as wasabi because of how similar the two words are, but it's not wasabi. Okay, so it's a Japanese philosophy which appreciates beauty and imperfections in our naturally imperfect world. So I'm still actually learning more about this concept, but I'll try my best to define it based on my own understanding of the concept so far. Because ultimately, it's quite a complex philosophy. You know, there are many parts to it. I'm still kind of trying to piece them up together. And, you know, the definition itself also changed quite a bit over time because it's just a really, really old Japanese philosophy. So from what I understand, WABI stands for simplicity and basically trying to find authenticity in what is imperfect. And SABI talks about the effect of time on something. So it's about appreciating the wear and tear of something. So it can be something that is broken and aged due to the effect of time. And I just thought that this concept was so interesting and beautiful. You know, it was my first time hearing it. And how this concept came about was, it was first seen in art objects, which focuses on highlighting the imperfections the irregularities, you know, the rough patches in the Japanese culture. So in their culture, they believe that, you know, a teapot with no cracks, or rather a teapot that is fully perfect, you know, the shape is perfect, everything is 100% symmetrical, you know, those are often less valued in their culture. Because how they see it is, is often the cracks and, you know, the irregularities that make something more unique and more irreplaceable. So when there's a broken teapot, what the Japanese would do is, you know, instead of replacing it with new ones, they would choose to mend the broken objects, you know, they'll mend the damage by filling the cracks with gold, you know, because they believe that when something has suffered damage and has a history behind it, it just becomes more beautiful and, you know, it holds more value over time. So when I came across this concept, I was just like, wow, you know, this concept is just so beautiful, right? Because I think it speaks to me, you know, it did give me another perspective for sure. You know, like I always hear people saying, embrace our imperfections, you know, love all parts of you. But then it's often so hard, right, to see that and to come to terms with that, you know, the imperfect sides of ourselves. But knowing this concept in a way, did allow me to see that, you know, it allows me to see that embracing our imperfections is actually one way that we can be more unique and perhaps even more beautiful in our own way. And there is aesthetic value to it. You know, it's not just about embracing imperfections, but embracing it because it can make you more beautiful, right? So that really hit me, you know, because I'm someone who is just so passionate about beauty right of all sorts and if being imperfect or rather embracing my imperfections can bring me a step closer to being more beautiful and being more authentic then in a way I do feel more driven or rather more encouraged by it right like you know it's not just about embracing for the sake of embracing but embracing because there's some form of authentic beauty and there is value to it right? So that really motivated me. And then now I come to see it as 
an approach to my life as well. You know, it's not just a Japanese concept that talks about broken teapots. And I actually come to, you know, eventually apply it in my life. But it's hard because we are all brought up to strive for, you know, the best. We are brought up to strive for perfection. So it may not be natural for us to seek pleasure in just being ordinary, you know, let alone a Japanese concept that celebrates the broken. So for me, embracing my imperfections had always been one of the hardest, hardest things, you know, I've been learning to do as part of this journey of finding the self, right? Because I am a perfectionist and that makes everything even harder, right? So I've been really actively finding ways in my life to help me to embrace you know, the different parts of me in every way possible, you know, that includes anything from external to internal. And I am still working hard at it, right? It's a constant learning journey, like I always like to say. But I've come to embrace quite a few things about me, you know, including the highly sensitive trait, which I talked about in episode eight, right? So today, I just want to share other things that I've come to embrace as well, as part of this journey of finding the self and, you know, showing up to myself more. So before that, I just also want to point out that, you know, encouraging this concept of wabi-sabi, you know, isn't encouraging people to be overly optimistic, you know, it's not encouraging people to be careless and seeing the negatives as positive, but it's more of like appreciating and, you know, sustaining the beauty of what is natural and what is authentic, right? And, you know, just coming to see things as what it is, even though it may be imperfect, and celebrating it for what it is. So maybe to put it in a better way, it's like kind of resisting from going against the natural flow of things and just not try so hard to reverse things which are not what it's supposed to be, you know, or something that has already happened. So in the past, I've been someone who is really obsessed with having perfect skin right? I mean, I still do. I still want to have perfect skin, you know, don't get me wrong. But, you know, in the past, it's more of like, I will literally get uncomfortable if I don't cover any blemishes or any imperfections on my skin, you know. But now, I haven't been putting on makeup for, I think, about a year now. And it was due to a skin condition, which I've developed. And basically, because of this condition, I was kind of forced to, you know, stay free from makeup or rather any form of chemical that will irritate the skin, right? So in the past year, I have been going out with zero makeup and that is something that I would have never ever imagined myself to do in the past because I used to feel that it's so impossible to step out of my house without any makeup. But I've been doing that for quite a while now, right? Quite a long while, I'll say. And, you know, it feels liberating. You know, I'm feeling more comfortable in my own skin. You know, in the past, I would usually get a bit uncomfortable if I didn't cover that one freckle or if I didn't cover that one sunspot on my face. And my face usually just looks like a white blank canvas. You know, people would comment that I have perfect skin and, you know, my skin looks so flawless. And probably over time, I've seen that forming part of my identity as well you know, the need to have perfect skin because that's what people associate me with, right? Because I probably felt a subconscious need to, you know, live up to the expectations. And yet, you know, internally, I also probably know that I've always been feeling insecure because, you know, what if people see the real me? You know, the me without makeup. Would they still think that way? Well, probably yes, but probably also no, right? And the insecurity feeling will always be there. You know, of course, I still care about how I look because, you know, beauty will always be one of my passion. And I think it's just natural to be conscious about how you look sometimes. But what I don't try to do is I don't try to cover up what is not. And instead, I just let whatever be what it is, right? So if I get a new sunspot due to sun exposure or due to aging, I'll just kind of try to let it be. I don't really find a strong need anymore to cover it up. And I don't even use that much skincare products anymore. You know, I used to use so much skincare products to, you know, reverse the 
process of aging to make myself look fairer. You know, I was so obsessed into those, you know, previously. But, you know, to be honest now, I've only been washing my face with water and I only use moisturizer for my entire skincare routine. Yeah, so it's basically just water and moisturizer and maybe also cleanser sometimes. You know, in the past, I would have step one to step nine of skincare routine and step one to step nine of makeup routine. And I would usually spend so much on all these products as well, right? And I don't know, it's just, I've come to realize sometimes that, you know, I've learned that less is more sometimes, right? And I've learned to just let things be the way they are. Because why I say less is more is because I really feel so much lighter, to be honest. And it's not only that, right? I've came to find that when I rely lesser on external stuff, you know, I spend less time on all these things, I realize that I have more energy for more meaningful stuff in my life, you know, other than trying to spend energy on covering up what isn't me. So I somehow also feel more powerful and more confident in my own skin these days, you know, without seeing a need to cover every single imperfection, you know. So, you know, I think it makes me more human. It makes me more authentic because everything on me is what makes me me. And the important thing is when people are receiving me, you know, they are also receiving my real self. And if they appreciate me, they are appreciating me for what I am, you know, the real me. And I think there's a lot of power in that because that's also when we grow to like ourselves better. You know, when we are able to let our full selves out, even the imperfect parts of us, to be seen and to be accepted. Because for something to be accepted, it first has to be seen, right? So that is really powerful because we grow to appreciate the not so good parts of us. And we kind of like allow its value to be seen, right? Instead of spending energy to hide it. So this really gave me inner confidence. Like, I would say that makeup can give me confidence, but it's another kind of confidence, you know. It's not from within. It's very external. And in a way, it's also something that can be easily taken away from me, right? Because to be honest with makeup, I do look better. I feel better in a way. But that's just probably a small part of the time, right? When I've makeup on, and then it's also all on the external. Like internally, I know that it's not who I am. So living without makeup for the past year has taught me that real confidence emerges from within. And you know, how do I put it? It's like real in a sense because it's the kind of confidence that cannot be easily taken away from you, right? When it comes from within you, it's not something that is external. It's something that we build within us right? And a big part of that process of building the confidence within us is really coming to accept and to see myself for who I am. And the more different we portray ourselves on the outside than who we are on the inside, I think that's when feelings of uncomfortableness, feelings of discomfort, right, comes in. And it's where insecurity comes in as well. Because that invites the question of, you know, what if people see the true me? You know, what if people see the me that is not packaged? So when we have too much of all these external enhancement or rather external reliance, what if just one day all these are just taken away from us, right? I think we will kind of feel lost. We will feel devastated. And probably we also realize that previously what gave us the affirmation and confidence and forms that part of our identity wasn't there anymore. So in a way, we might even feel like we are losing a part of who we are. We are losing a part of our identity, right? When we put too much reliance on all these external stuff or when we subconsciously attach too much to our identity as well as our self-esteem, right? Now, I think it's natural that we attach all these, you know, things to our identity, you know, which gives us a sense of who we are because as humans, we don't exist in vacuum. So for instance, if people ask me who I am, you know, I probably introduce myself by, you know, relating it to my job, my relationship, right? And what do I do for a living? I think it's natural that we normally just kind of, you know, rely on external stuff to give us a sense of who we are. But I think the point here is more of 
finding that balance so that we don't lose too much power to external things. And sometimes it can be in the form of, you know, people's words, people's perception, you know, that take too much control of our identity than what we intended to. Like for me, I've developed a skin condition, you know, unexpectedly, which kind of resulted in me not having able to wear makeup and I had no choice, right, but to accept the situation as it is, right? I have to let go of things that I previously attached on to me that I've previously once thought is so important. So I think it can be applicable to other things in our lives as well, be it our relationships, our jobs, you know, sometimes it may also be in the form of relying too much on others' perceptions and validation or love, right? So I'm just trying to, you know, bring a point across that when we come to attach ourselves too much on the one thing for our identity, you know, it's kind of like putting all our eggs in one basket. And if one day, you know, that is just taken away from us without warning, we are actually giving a part of ourselves away. And that is also where it becomes really challenging as well, right? And sometimes we just can't control all these things from happening. So I think what we can control is to learn not to maybe attach too much of external stuff on us, right? And that is what I've came to realize. And I'm really not saying that we can't, you know, we can, but it's more of like when we are doing it, it's making sure that we are conscious about it and we are consciously choosing to perform that attachment, all right? So after saying all this, I have to say that you know, of course, I do miss the days that I can put on makeup before I got my skin condition, right? And to be honest, I wouldn't deny the fact that I still want to put on makeup, right? I look forward to the day that I can actually put on my makeup again. And sometimes I still look back at old pictures to kind of see how do I look like with makeup on. It just really feels so foreign to me and so long ago that I last had makeup on. So I do look forward to the day once my skin gets better but I think probably you know the intention here will be a bit different now you know how I look at it is probably different right instead of like using makeup to cover my imperfections it's more of like enhancing what's already there right and probably I think also not as much as before the amount really matters and it's more of like finding the balance and being conscious about it so that I don't get overly reliant on it over time. So it's the case where, you know, even without it, I must be able to feel that, you know, I'm still able to function properly. I think one way to, you know, know the balance is maybe, you know, I'll be asking myself, like, without it, am I still able to feel comfortable? Am I still able to function properly, right? I think that is the balance that we want to be able to feel even completely okay without it, if that makes sense. So I think the entire lesson learned here is, you know, less is more sometimes, you know, more specifically, less external reliance. And that also means less need to be perfect. And the concept of wabi-sabi did encourage that, right? Because living without makeup for the past one year, which was once my external reliance, had taught me that, you know, confidence comes from within me and I just can't emphasize this enough, right? So in a way, less external reliance gives me more things, right? It gives me more inner confidence, you know, it gives me more energy. And I think more importantly, right, it gives me a truer sense of myself and who I am. So I'm able to feel more of my authentic self And just being able to show a bigger part of who I am to others, I think that itself gives me a lot of happiness. And I do also need to say that, you know, embracing imperfections and coming to terms with who we are also do take time. It wasn't an overnight process that, you know, I came to feel comfortable in my own skin, right? It took me a few months, I think more than six months easily. I mean, even now, I wouldn't say that I'm completely comfortable, right? I'm still in the process of getting used to it, even after one year. And it was also because I wasn't mentally prepared. It just comes to me unexpectedly. And it was, you know, sometimes this unexpected stuff that makes it really hard because you do not have the time to really mentally prep yourself for it. So I've learned that, you know, sometimes 
as much as there is value in embracing our imperfections, I think it's a gradual process. It takes time for us to see the value in it as well. Especially when something has been a large part of your identity for so long, it takes time, right, to reclaim that side of you that you have accidentally given power away. And I am telling myself to be really patient with myself on this. Okay? So in the next episode, I will continue my sharing on Wabi Sabi and also other lessons I've learned along the way and how I have applied it to other areas of my life. Thanks for chilling in. If you enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to subscribe. You can also connect with me on Instagram at chillbynet or my website chillbynet.com to join the conversation and access our show notes. Have a great day and we'll chill again very soon.